Hello, hello, hello. I'm a local hippie, and I am reading Shakespeare's Macbeth. So, you, oh viewer, are going to read it with me. Um, this is just going to be probably not a vlog, probably more of a commentary where I come in, give some thoughts here and there about this reading of Shakespeare. It is Sunday, April 29th. What? No, it's Sunday, April 28th, and I am trying to finish this. It's not that long, so I should be able to if I focus really, really hard, which I've been failing at, but if I focus really, really hard, I should be able to finish it by Tuesday evening. Tuesday is the last day of April. So, at uh, tomorrow, and then I have Tuesday. Okay, so the thing here with reading Macbeth and and why I want to read Shakespeare in general is because he's one of the greats, obviously, number one, first and foremost. And then also because one of the things I want to practice more of is reading with intention and reading slowly. Um, just taking in the literature. And it helps, I think, why reading plays or reading Shakespeare in general can help is because there are these notes on the side that you can refer to and can help you to understand the story when the language gets a little bit like, what the hell is this? Or you might see a word where we think it in our language means one thing, but it's not the connotation that we're used to. It's something different because of the time the lapse of time between then and now and um so I'm finding it like very rewarding to slow down and to read this and to break it down and to scan between the notes on the side and the main page to make sure I'm taking in everything and I'm understanding the story um and you have to read slow to be able to do that and so that's one of the reasons why I want to read some more Shakespeare this year because it's forcing me to slow down, to break down the text bit by bit, and to really digest it the way that I want to do pretty much anything I read. Yeah, because the goal in being a reader, for me at least, is to become a stronger reader. Um, so, yeah, that's probably going to be it for tonight, honestly. Um, I'm getting a little sleepy. And I'll come back tomorrow with some updates. I may pair it with the audiobook if I can find it in Libby. Um, but yeah. And hopefully I won't be in bed with a bonnet on. <laughs> just at the beginning of scene five where we are introduced to Macbeth's wife um I'm definitely gonna try to finish this up tomorrow yeah because I'm just so sleepy so I'm probably gonna get up in the morning read some then and then read some at work and then read some on my way home um I'm really enjoying it I'm really enjoying just kind of taking apart the text taking my time and referring to the play notes um, i've already done some annotating i don't think i'll ever be able to read shakespeare and not do annotating because he's just that good but yeah that was pretty much it so this is pretty much going to be kind of like a vlog style like commentary uh, so yeah with just little updates here and there not too much going on but yeah i'll see you when i have another update tomorrow <coughs> okay this is bad the lighting is very bad eee, I don't want to get. <laughs> hi 
Hello, it's the next morning, April 30th, I think. I am on Act 1, Scene 7. And one thing I want to say that I really appreciate about the Folger Shakespeare Library is that they give you a summary of the scenes, part of the page notes of the book. I love that um, because what I'm finding is that for some of these notes, there are a lot of things that are covered and do help me understand the text or certain words but there are a few words where i'm like what like what why are you telling me what this means when this is obvious what this means but you're not telling me what this means because this is just not obvious at all and this is definitely not something that we would use in today's language i don't know but i'm super thankful for those summaries of the scenes at the beginning because they help me to understand um a bigger bulk of what's going on and i do think that it will be helpful in the future to read shakespeare on my kindle because one of the things that i really really love on kindle that you don't have access to when you're reading um a physical uh book because on kindle you can just tap on a word and you can get the definition pops up sure you can do that on your phone as you're reading a physical book but that takes you out of the book. That takes you out of the narrative. And you don't want to be taken out of the narrative. I don't want to be taken out of the narrative. I don't want to be taken out of the story. Um, at all. So, but, um, so yeah, in the future, I do think I'm going to read Shakespeare on my Kindle for that express reason. And yeah, listen to this. But here upon the bank, and shoal of time, we jump the life to come. But in these cases, we still have judgment here that we but teach bloody instructions, which being taught return to plague the inventor. That was so good. <laughs> yeah. I said I was gonna, well, I said I was gonna try to finish Macbeth by the end of April. That did not happen. So I'm still reading it. I'm in act two. I'm just taking it slow because I'm really super, super. It's been a couple days. It's now Thursday and I've been laying in bed and I'm tired. last day of this commentary slash vlog um because it's just taking me a while to read um Macbeth I'm taking it very very slowly and I'm totally okay with that because I that means I can digest the story um I can enjoy it for what it is I think that this is probably going to be my favorite Shakespeare I've read. This is my this is my fourth Shakespeare and I think it's my favorite Shakespeare. I'll close this commentary out with a digression that Macbeth goes on in act two scene. No sorry it's act three scene one this is a uh, sort of soliloquy that Macbeth goes on. Um, he is being, he's basically being tormented in his mind because of what he's done um, for the crown. And I, this, I think this soliloquy kind of explains why Shakespeare is one of the greatest to ever do it. So in order to close things out, to be thus is nothing, but to be safely thus, our fears in Banquo sink, stick deep, and in his royalty of nature reigns that which would be feared. Tis much he dares, and to that dauntless temper of his mind, he hath the wisdom that doth guide his valor to act in safety. There is none but he whose being I do fear, and under him my genius is rebuked as it is, as it is said, Mark Antony's was by Caesar, his child 
the sisters when they when first they put the name of king upon me and bade them speak to him then prophet like they hailed him father to a line of kings upon my head they placed a fruitless crown and put a barren scepter in my grip thence to be wretched with an unlineal hand no son of mine succeeding if it be so for banquo's issue have i filled my mind for them the gracious duncan have i murdered put rancers in the vessel of my peace only for them and mine eternal jewel given to the common enemy of man to make them kings the seeds of banquo kings rather so come fate into the list and champion me to the utterance and it's so cool because you get this character arc of Macbeth and you see where he starts out and he's like dude I don't even I don't like I don't like I don't want to I don't want to do this and then how it's how there's just this change in him and it's so good it's so so good but yeah um that's gonna bring us to the end of the video bring us to the end of the commentary um I hope you have a good day I hope you have a good evening and most importantly I hope you read a good book and I'll see you when I see you